hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. So tonight, tonight we're taking advantage of the the long nights coming in, and we're heading to an area of quite a lot of historical significance. And <clears throat> the area that I'm going to is a place called Inversnaid. And Inversnaid is famous for Rob Roy McGregor, um, who was born in this area and who more or less lived most of his life in this area. But in Versnaid, the hotel has also got an interesting past um, because the hotel was actually built by the Duke of Montrose way back in 1790. But Queen Victoria um, is reputed to have visited the hotel as well. So join me tonight and let's see where the journey takes us. So tonight I've come to Inversnaid and what I'm looking for is trying to see if I can get various compositions with the Inversnaid waterfall. But the Inversnaid waterfall is also known as the Arklet waterfall because the hotel up the top was built in 1790 by the Duke of Montrose and it was built as a hunting lodge and the waterfall comes down all the way from Loch Arklet further up um, the road. So what I'm doing is I'm just setting up my composition. I've got the waterfall coming in on the far left hand side. I've got, because it's the sun's keeps coming out, I've got my polarizer on so that I can see through the water in, in front of me, in the foreground. <clears throat> I've got, I focused in on the waterfall. I've got a fifth of a second. I've got F16 and ISO 100. And because it's bright, that's why I needed F16. So I'm just going to check that image. Because what I want to do is I want to get some form of kind of smoothness in the water. And that's really nice. So what I'll do now is I'll just turn around. I'll zoom in a little bit further. I'll just change the composition round just a bit. What I don't want is the bridge in this shot. So what I might do is just zoom out just a tad. I'm going to refocus on the falls. And bear in mind... It's difficult to focus on the water, so you look for the rocks beside the waterfall. So I've taken that shot. I'm just double checking for highlight clippings. There's no highlight clippings, and that's a really nice image. So what I'll do is I'll turn the camera over in portrait mode. I will adjust the polarizer so that I've got all the water dark in front of me. I'll adjust the composition so that the bridge at the top is out of focus, I'm just going to straighten up my camera leg here because I'm half in the water it's a wee bit awkward right, so I'm just going to have to tilt the camera up a bit right, I'm just going to check my focus there take that shot oh, and that's a really nice image so the next composition is I'm going to walk closer to the falls because there's a big huge boulder at the bottom of the falls and it'd be great to get the perspective looking up to it. So let's walk forward and see if we can find another area and we'll get some more shots. All right, so I've got a wee bit closer to the falls, there's that big rock in front of me. What I'm trying to do is I'm standing, kind of balancing in myself against the rock. The sun was out, it's just went away again. So I'm having to slow down my shutter speed 
just a bit. So I'm at F16 ISO 100 and I've got a third of a second now instead of a fifth. Well, I think we've lost the sun for the night because there seems to be no easy way. There's no clouds going to give for the sun, so it's going to be pretty overcast, but that's okay. So I've reached as high as I can go for the waterfalls. And the reason I'm saying it that way is the path and the fence is all shut off here. So I'll have to walk all the way right round and then climb up the top of the falls. But that's fine, we'll do that later on. I couldn't get over in front of the rocks where I wanted to be because there was no way of getting down. I really need to have wellies on to walk across. So I need to remember that and come back again and bring wellies. But nothing's lost. What we'll do is we'll focus in on the falls from here. I've got a really nice viewpoint. I'm trying to go as wide as I possibly can. And I've got the start of the waterfalls up on the top left hand side. I'm just going to tweak the polarizer just to see where I get the best effect. So that'll be here. Right, I'm just checking I'm level and I'm going to check my focus and I'm going to focus in on the top of the falls those rocks that are up there so because the sun has went away it's actually quite dark so what I might do is lower the f-stop to f-13 just to brighten it up I've still got a third of a second it's quite underexposed I just want to double check that water because I don't want any highlights in the water oh wow so as usual when I'm taking shots of waterfalls, what I don't want to do is freeze the water. I want to get the water as smooth and as silk as possible, but not too smooth because the last thing you need is your water looking like milk. So I've got enough detail with the third of a second that you can actually see through the water and it's quite transparent. And it's a really nice wispy effect. We'll walk. We'll wander up to the top of the waterfall and we'll see what's up there. What I might do is there's a nice little jetty there. So before we walk up to the falls, because it's going to be quite a long walk, um, just because I've shut this path off, then I'll take some shots of the Arakar Mountains that are in front of me. I'll take some shots, there's a little boat in the jetty, and then we'll see if those make some nice images. Right, so in front of me are the Arakar Alps on the west side of Loch Lomond. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to see if I can get this jetty in focus. And what I've done is to ensure I've got separation, I've set up my composition in a way that I've got the opening of the jetty. So I haven't shut it out. And then that opening of the jetty gives us a leading line up to the top mountain. So what I'm doing is I'm just turning my polarise around so that I've taken the glare off the water that's here in the jetty. I'm just focused on the boat. I'll take that shot and that's quite nice. Right, so I don't know if this is going to work but if I, there's a lot of ru rubbish and debris on this little beach area here. But what I'll try and do is get down to the beach. It looks uh, it's hard to tell if that's going to take my weight. Um, what I'll do is I'll try and get down to the beach area and see if I can get a lower shot of the boat and then get the mountains in the background. Oh, it's, that's fine. I thought this was a beach. It's actually concrete. Right, so what I'll do, again I'm conscious that I want to keep separation at the end of the jetty so we've got an opening in the image and what I'll do is I'll bring up my camera the only the unfortunate thing is we've got the rope that's tying the boat in but what I'll do is I'll do a yeah 
I'll do a wide angle shot first and then I'm just going to check my polarizers in the right place there. I'll focus in on the boat, just double check, focus. I'll take the shot. So the water's probably about three, four weeks ago we had quite a lot of storms and heavy rain and the water must have been really, really high because that lower jet is full of debris as well. Right, so what I'll do here is I'll do a quick exposure compensation with three shots and then what I'll do now is I'll zoom into the boat. So that's me got the wide angle view and now I'll zoom into the boat and then I'll have the mountains in the background. Ah, fantastic. Right, so that's us finished here and let's wander up. If we're not distracted anymore, we'll wander up to the top of the falls. Oops. Alright, so I've came to the top of the falls. Oh, get a wee breath. So what I'll do is I've spotted this section of the falls and then there's another shot down the way that looks onto the loch. Um, not as spectacular as this to be fair. So what I'll do is I'll get, before anybody comes along this path or trail and I'm make sure I'm not in the way. What I've got to do here is make sure that the rail isn't in the way either. If I reduce the F stop to F10 and I can just keep the shutter speed to a third of a second, it's what I'll have to do. I don't like that composition to be fair because the handrail is in my way. Right, so what I'll do here is I'll, I've got a composition that I like. I'm going to zoom in and focus in on the rocks. I'll take that shot. I'll need to make sure I don't move in the bridge because the, the bridge is quite soft. So just double check in that image. That's nice. So I might speed up the... I might speed up the shutter speed to a fourth of a second which means I've had to increase my ISO to 125 and I'm still shooting at F10. So I'm just double checking. I've got no highlights in the water. That's nice. I'm just checking to see if there's any really dark shadow areas. So I'm going to do a three shot exposure compensation just to not to get an underexposed shot, but this time to get a overexposed shot so I can get the detail in any of the shadows just in case I need it. Right, so that's really nice. All right, so what I've done is I've set up the, my camera in portrait mode. So I've got a vertical shot. I've got a third of a second F14. I've upped the ISO to 200. I've adjusted my polarizer. It's still a wee bit dark. So what I'll do, because I want to keep the water the way it is, I'm going to up the ISO to ISO 320 and oh, one or two little highlight clippings. So I'll drop the ISO to ISO 250 and I've got no clippings. Perfect. Now what I'd like to do is I'm going to zoom in. There's two or three small rapids coming in. I say rapids. Flows of water and I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit because there's a little rock pool that they're coming over. So I've given myself space so that if I have to do a crop, I've given myself plenty of space to do a crop. Right, so I'm just adjusting. So this polarizer is actually taking a glint off the rocks as well as the water. But I don't want all the glint off the rocks. I want the, the rocks to pop because the, the rocks are pure black. So what I might do is up my ISO to 320 because it's quite dark here. I'll take that shot. Right, so I've got the water where I like it. I'll just do a quick three shot exposure compensation and then that'll be me. Then what we'll do is we'll just work our way around because 
I thought I see in a wee ledge over the falls and it might be quite nice to get a view down that side of the falls. Right, let me just double check this image. Yeah, that's nice. Right, let's move on. can't. <laughs> I found a really cool part of the river but it's further up so I'm going to have to do a wee bit of climbing just to make sure I can get up there. So I'm just taking my time um, up on the rocks. Right so here they are. These. Oh wow. Oh wow this is stunning. So do you know it always pays just <laughs> to have that wee bit extra nosy when you're walking around and don't be afraid to climb, just be safe. Right, so let me get started. Alright, so now I'm going to start to take photographs. So, I'm going to drop my ISO. Well, I've actually got Fourth of a second, take my ISO right down to 400. Right, so for this shot, I'm just going to focus in. There's a rock in front of the falls in the middle of the scene. So I'm just going to focus in on that rock. I'm going to take a shot because it's really dark in here. I've had to up my ISO to 400. But I've still got F14 and I've still got a fourth of a second. I'm just checking the water. Because I'm quite close, I might have to make that shutter speed faster. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right, so I'm going to increase my shutter speed to an eighth of a second. I'm not going to change the ISO, but I'm going to adjust my f-stop. So I've increased my shutter speed to an eighth of a second. I've lowered my f-stop, 4 stops to f10, I've still got ISO 100 and I'm just going to check that water texture, it's because it's the water in front of me that's, right that's nice, so the other thing I've noticed is because I'm shooting f10 and because this is really close, I'm going to have to do a photo stack. So if I put my hand in front of the camera, I'll do the photo stack, I'll do three images, and then I'll show you that image with real detail front to back now. Alright, so that's my third image. So what I'm going to do now is, the pool in front of the waterfalls, I'm at that, le my head level is at their level, so what I'm going to do is, there's a composition here that again I'm probably going to have to photo stack, but <coughs> it's really cool. So what's happening in this shot, I need to watch when I'm standing because I fall in. I've got the waterfalls in front of me. I'm at that level of the pool at the bottom of the falls. But that small fall in front of me is flowing down. So what I've got is all these waterfalls coming in from the left hand side, going through that smooth pool and then coming out in the bottom left hand side of my image. So a really nice flow that comes through and I'm hoping that's a really nice composition. My only concern is I might not have enough space at the top of my image. Um, 
Right, let's give that a, let's give that a try. for photos. Right, there's an amazing wee glow I spotted down there. I'll need to level these down. <laughs> and then worry about how I'm going to get back later. Right, so let me see if I can get a shot here because that's, there's a really nice glow for the sun. Um, there, so if I turn that round, oh that's nice, right so what I've got here is, oh that's better, right, I've got a wide, a wide view now, right brilliant, just not, just going to adjust my focus, I'm out of puff, it's more nerves than try to figure out how to get back over. Right, so I've got ISO 1000, F16 a fourth of a second, and I've got a whole scene in front of me where I've got the sun going down behind the Arakar Mountains there. And there's a reflection of the goldiness on the loch, on Loch Lomond. And I've got the bridge here in front of me. I'm just double checking I've got that colour. Right. So what I might do now is zoom in just slightly more. To there. Double check my focus again. I'm focusing in on the bridge. I'll take that shot. I'll do a quick three second exposure compensation. I keep looking around me to see if there's different compositions and that looked quite nice there so I might take a shot there before I go. Right, so what I'm going to do now is zoom in and what I've got is some rhododendrons down here that's growing off the rock. Um, actually that might make quite a nice panoramic shot. So what I'll do is I've got my focus. I'll take one shot. So I'm going to do a vertical panoramic shot. Do a second shot. Do a third shot. And then I'll do a fourth shot. And then we'll see how that turns out. Right. So now to find my way back and figure out how I'm going to get back over. Oh, let me protect my camera first. I'm just wondering if I could jump and push the camera with me. I was heading back to the van, but I think I've got time for one more shot before it gets really dark, so I've seen this scene and I'm right at the top of the falls but this rock in the middle and the water's coming round the rock and it actually looks, it actually looks really nice so I'm trying to figure out the best composition here so I've got, just change my polarizer round the glare off the water there. I'm going to focus into the center of the image and just focus straight in on the rock, the center rock. So I've got a fourth of a second F16 ISO, a thousand, but my problem is I'm um, two stops underexposed. 
So if I go down to F11, that puts me just under my exposure. Uh, it's okay, but it's not what I want. Let me just try that again. So if I put uh, just the polarizer there, take my shot, I'm getting a wee bit of light pollution in my the top side of my polarizer. Right, so what I'll do is a quick three shot exposure compensation. I'm going to see if I can put my hand over the polarizer so I don't get light pollution in on the image. Um, yeah, that might that might be nice. All right. right. Excellent. Well, I think we'll finish here. I hope you enjoyed that tonight and hopefully we can make a video out of it. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that'll let you know the next time I post a video. So thanks very much for watching and here's to the next video.